Welcome back to the final episode of the 380 Micro Pistol Ammo Quest, where I take a little tiny micro pistol like this. Check that out. That thing totally disappears behind the palm of a hand. It's so thin. These micro pistols are so convenient. They're easy to carry. You can slip it in a pocket or carry it in the waistband and not even know it's there. Women can carry it in the purse, whatever. They're so convenient, but are they any good? You know, what kind of ammo do you use in this where you can actually have a, a hope that it will be effective in stopping an attack. Um, yeah, if it's a pea shooter, what good is it? It's no good if it's just a pea shooter. So I wanted to find if what ammo there is, or if there's a round of ammo, that would actually make this effective in fending off an attacker. And the advice I ran into over and over is, just use ball ammo, just use FMJs. That's the only thing that makes sense. Hollow points are all no good. There's got to be something that will work better than just settling for an FMJ, because an FMJ is, is, in general, a lousy choice for self-defense. It's, it makes a tiny little wound, and it'll overpenetrate. And both of those are, are bad. The good thing about FMJ is they penetrate deep enough to stop an attack. But the bad thing is that they overpenetrate and they don't make big wounds. So I said as my standard, the 12 inch minimum to 18 inch maximum that was established at the Wound Ballistic Conferences of 1987 and 1993, where trauma surgeons, combat surgeons, uh, forensic pathologists, medical examiners, they all got together to evaluate what makes a bullet effective in actually stopping an attacker. And what they came up with was the bullet has to have enough power to penetrate 12 inches of soft tissue but they don't want it to go further than 18 inches. And the FBI adopted that as their standard. So that's what I set for myself. I want a bullet to perform at least that well. No, I'm not the FBI. No, I don't care whether it'll go through auto glass or through plywood or whatever other tests they run. I don't care about that. I just want to know that through bare gelatin or through four layers of heavy denim gelatin, like the IWBA specifies, that it will meet that standard. So I got all this ammo, I tried it, and now I've broken it down into groups and categories. We're going to go through and I'm going to tell you where things ended up. You may be seeing your favorite ammo out here, maybe rooting for it. Well, I'm going to start dividing it up and you can follow along. First group is stuff I would never use. It just doesn't penetrate deep enough. This is stuff that on... On average, it's either frangible, so it just it's some powder, or it only penetrates about eight inches. And that's just nowhere near good enough. Uh, maybe for a belly gun, but not for general defensive purposes. And the group that, that only met that standard that's now being kicked out of the running, it's over here. Yep, Hornady Critical Defense. I know people love it, but it does not perform from a little 2.8 inch barrel. Copper only projectiles. PDX-1, okay, we got Critical Defense and PDX-1, two of the biggest names. If people are telling you, you know, don't use hollow points, if, if it's because they tested these, then they're right. These don't perform. Ranger T, it's out of here. Uh, Golden Sabres, they don't get it. DRT, they're gone. Those I wouldn't use at all. Next category is ammo that is better than that, but not as good as FMJs. In that category, we've got ammo that... When it expands, it comes up short, but frequently it doesn't expand, so then it acts like an FMJ. So frequently it will penetrate enough, unlike these. These will never penetrate enough. Frequently this stuff will penetrate enough, but frequently it also won't. And so I don't trust it. I don't recommend it. That includes the Buffalo Bore 90 grain standard pressure and the Underwood loading of Golden Sabres. Um, when these expanded, they were great but they didn't quite penetrate far enough. And then in denim, they just totally over-penetrated. So I, I want to hit that 12-inch level if we can possibly get that. So my next category is FMJs. I got some Remington UMCs here. These will go about 21 inches. They won't expand in any way whatsoever. Tiny little wound uh, profile and the risk of over-penetration. It's bad, bad, bad. The only good thing about them is they will penetrate deep enough. So these are Remington UMC hollow points. Uh, in my testing, they acted exactly like FMJ, so I put them in the FMJ category. All right, we're getting down to it. Um, next category is better than FMJs, but still not good enough. And by this, I mean rounds that penetrate at least 12 inches, but are still prone to over-penetrating. So these are rounds that I think if, if you chose an FMJ instead of these, 
you're, you're smoking something. It's silly because, I mean, for example, these uh, core bonds, 90 grains, these did fantastic in the bear gelatin, um, but they all over penetrated in the denim test. Well, in, in bear gelatin or light clothing situation, these were great bullets. In the heavy clothing situation, they acted like FMJs. Well, that's the thing. In the light clothing, they were vastly better. So better than FMJs. If you chose an FMJ over this, I think you're just not thinking straight. Uh, same with the Starfires. Uh, one of those grossly overpenetrated. Um, the rest of them did okay, but they don't expand consistently at all. Still better than FMJs. And the uh, Double Tap with the Barnes Tac XP. Uh, similar situation. They expanded okay, but I uh, had one underpenetrate and one overpenetrate. I don't like underpenetrating. And that brings me to the next category, which is better than nothing, not overpenetrating, but not good enough. Uh, I guess a distant runner up. It just didn't get the job done. Gold dots. Sorry, guys. And gold dots. Gold dots are like the most. Uh, requested review that I've done. People love gold dots. I love gold dots in all ways, except it just doesn't hold up in the 380. Not from the micro pistol. It, they do well. They go more than 10 inches, but they don't hit 12 consistently. On average, they do, but they not consistently. And you need consistency because you don't know. You know, if one bullet goes 10 inches and one goes 12, you need the penetration, it needs to be consistent. The gold dots occasionally reach that level, but in the in the heavy clothing, they fell even shorter. So I don't want to put them away, but I'm gonna put them away because they don't get the job done. And that brings us to the winner circle. This is the stuff to consider. This is the stuff that people said is not gonna happen, but did over 12 inches consistently in both mediums. There's differences in this group, but I'm going to say any of these would be a great choice and would be vastly better than any of that stuff. Um, four of the five here that made this cut, that made it to the winner's circle, used the Hornady XTP bullet. And in fact, every XTP round I tested made it into the winner's circle. So that tells you something. If it says XTP on it, it's probably a pretty decent load from the little 380 micro pistol. The XTP just hits the right balance of penetration and expansion. So you get expansion, you get the better wounding profile of an expanded hollow point, but you don't get over penetration or under penetration. You get good solid penetration. So HPRs, great job, great penetration, uh, beautiful expansion in the bear gelatin. In the denim, they did fantastic penetration wise, but their expansion was rather inconsistent. So it's not my favorite, but it is a great choice. Uh, same thing for the Hydroshocks. Hydroshocks, old, old technology bullet, but it is still performing well. Uh, bear gelatin performance was beautiful, just perfect. And the denim performance, the penetration was fantastic. Expansion was inconsistent. I wish it was more consistent, but it did, the, it got the job done. Hornady Customs. These are Hornady's loadings of their own XTP bullets. The rest of these are XTPs. Uh, this is the fastest load of all the XTPs, and it did well. It did well. It wasn't the best performer. It was the biggest expander of the XTPs, but it was also the shortest penetrator, and those two go hand in hand. The bigger it expands, the less it can penetrate. So the XTPs did very well, but there, it, two did come short of 12 inches in the denim test, and I did, I'm not comfortable with that. So, But the other three did better than that. So it's a good round overall, but not good enough to claim the final crown. The Extremist. Excellent performer in all ways. Uh, only negative is that one of them in the denim round did over penetrate over 18 inches. I think it was 18 three quarters. Not a big deal, but it's something to keep the final title away from it. But an excellent performer in all ways. And I'd rather have it over penetrate three quarters of an inch than under penetrate like this stuff. But the winner, hands down, Precision One. It's an XTP load. It penetrated 13.8 inches in the bare gelatin, 13 and a half inches in the heavy denim gelatin, all rounds expanded, no rounds over penetrated, no rounds under penetrated. It did exactly what I set out to do. If the FBI was gonna qualify a little 380 micro pistol for duty use, it'd be with this ammo because this stuff did it. Now, I don't know that there's 
really a reason why this would perform any better than this. I mean, they're both XTPs, so maybe it was just the particular bullets that were fired, fired in that block. And maybe if I did it on another day, maybe these would come out a little bit better than these. But what I can say is consistently, the XTPs all did better than everything else. So any XTP you choose is great. If you're not comfortable working with a smaller brand like Precision One and you want a name brand, I would probably recommend the Fiocchi Extremas or the Hydroshocks. These were both fantastic runners up. So thanks for watching. And now you know what I think. You can go to my blog on shootingbull.net and you'll see a post that lays it all out in a table format with links to the videos to review. So you can, when you're researching 380 ammo for your micro pistol, you'll, you'll have an all-in-one resource there. I appreciate all the watching, all the comments, all the shares, all the likes, everything that you guys have done. And we're going to be doing it again for 9mm here in with 9mm pocket pistols. So stay tuned and hit subscribe and thanks for watching.